Hi, uh, my name is Keegan Moster, and uh, I have my partners here. I'm Joseph Choi. I'm Jackson Kamadolski. And the uh, fatigue failure analysis that uh, we did was the Versailles rail accident of 1842. So this accident occurred on May 8th of 1842 during the celebration of King Louis Philippe's birthday. What happened was there were two locomotives carrying 17 carriages with 640 passengers total around 530. And the front axle snapped as the train rounded a curve at extremely high speeds. This caused the first train engine block to drop and then the second locomotive behind it to crash into it and promptly spreading a lot of uh, fire and grease boxes amongst the wreckage, thus causing the fire in the painting seen below. Next slide, please. So as a result of this catastrophe, it was the first and deadliest railway accident in the world at the time, causing between 52 and 200 deaths, one of which was famed explorer Jules Dumont d'Urville, who was a famed botanist known for various discoveries in the herbal and plant field at the time. Next, I will hand it off to Jackson to talk about the investigation into what caused such failures. So um, at the accident, there were a number of witnesses that, as it happened pretty uh, soon after leaving, but uh, one witness was a locomotive engineer, uh, Joseph Locke. And uh, he started this investigation into uh, what led to the failure, but the most com comprehensive research was done by William Ranking, um, who spent a lot of time investiga investigating broken axles and uh, was also among the first to discuss the growth of cracks um, that we have discussed um, in this class and why they often would, uh, axles would often break. Next slide. So what was found through Rankine's research was that brittle cracking uh, caused the axle to snap. Um, and during the mid 1800s, uh, um, British engineers conducted fatigue tests of these axles and they found almost a precursor to uh, the, um, well, they found a safe life for common components used in these uh, locomotives. And uh, they called it a safe uh, life, but that is the what is commonly now known as the endurance limit. Um, and they also identified sharp corners that are more prone to cracks uh, on the locomotive. Uh, this is also a precursor to the modern concept of stress risers. Um, and then it also led to more investigation into microstructural stru changes, although it was a bit too early to do anything on that level um, with the technology they had. Next slide, please. Uh, so in the mid 1800s, like I said before, uh, they uh, developed a precursor to the endurance limit. They also looked at the ideal, the crack formation. And finally, um, as, as uh, technology advanced, we were able to look inside the metal and uh, determine the microstructural changes um, that could help develop and uh, further the growth of cracks. Next slide. So once all that was uh, discussed uh, and they figured out that what happened with the axle, uh, so they tried to take those and uh, improve further designs. Uh, but some of these initial fixes were not enough. Um, you still saw plenty of train accidents happening in the 1800s, um, continuing uh, in Great Britain until the late 1880s uh, because some of these like I said, weren't the designs weren't uh, completely uh, satisfied or whatever. Um, and then most train accidents after that point, once these were fixed and once they figured out really what was going on, it was less of an axle problem and more of other problems regarding the, the train and the train system. So failure of rails and rail ties as shown as the top picture. Uh, the embankment that that train was on failed as it was going by and the train uh, fell off the tracks. And then the failure of wheels uh, as shown and as presented by one of the other groups uh, with this train here in the bottom. And so some of the improvements, um, like we said, that were made uh, just mainly increased knowledge of mechanical failure and fatigue failure of the axles 
led to the better designs and uh, to better materials to be used, things that were less prone to fatigue failure and those sort of things. Um, and also increased inspections and other protocols, increased railroad safety uh, regarding the safety of trains and all the mechanisms inside the trains, as well as the rails that they ran on. And uh, here are our works cited. Uh, thank you for watching.